this one light right up here is the only one that won't turn on when I flip the switch. This one turns on. All the other ones turn on. I can't, it powers on, but I can't get it to like power on. I gotta do it with the app. Hold on a sec. There we go. <clears throat> How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. We post these in the morning, so if you're watching it semi-early, I hope you have a great day, and this is just the start of one of them. I have a list for you today, something I think you'll appreciate. I'm sure you know what it is from the title. We talk about a lot of gear on this channel, and I, in my live streams, get to talk to you about the gear that you want. And over the years, I have accumulated gear, some of which I am grateful that I've purchased, some of which uh, I have regretted deeply. Buyer's remorse, buyer's remorse happens. So I thought I would sit down with you and share with you a comprehensive list of some of my favorite things that I've purchased that maybe some people don't understand the value of. And then also just as important, maybe even more important, the things that I've bought that I wish that I didn't. Or, or let's not say that, maybe, maybe the things that I see people buy and I go, hmm. That wasn't a good call. So let's jump in. This is the streamer slash content creator. I'm gonna put this on the ground. Underrated, overrated gear list. This video doesn't have a real sponsor, so let's just sponsor it with StreamBeats real quick. If you're not familiar with StreamBeats, it is the best, and I might be a little biased because it's mine, but it is the best copyright free music you can possibly use for your live streams. Not only is it safe to use in your live streams, whether on Twitch or on YouTube, but you can also use it in YouTube videos like we're using it in this one without getting demonetized. Do you need something? Just bored? Lonely? Okay, yeah. All right, well, stop moving the desk. You can not only download the tracks for free on StreamBeats.com to use in your videos like this, but you can also listen to them on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, literally like, even on Pandora. Like, who uses Pandora? But it's there, if that's you, if you use it. We have over 1,500 tracks, 16 different genres, and they're all bangers. So check them out. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Links in the description down below. Cool, so I've got a list over here. Actually, it's, it's two lists. One is a list of underrated items, one is a list of overrated items. And both of these lists, they're both five items long and they're all things that you can buy. Or at least you can spend money on. These aren't, none of these are like, you know what's underrated? Social skills and a jawline. Cause let's be real, I'd be 100% correct there. Charisma, charisma takes you very far on YouTube. But stuff like that is not on the list. This is stuff that is available to everyone today. And look, while I'm going through these things, I'd love, I'd love to get your thoughts on them, to get your opinions on not only my list, but maybe your list, something I'm missing, throw it in the comments. I say something and you heavily disagree with me, throw it in the comments. Just make sure that you say why. Because there's always that guy who's like, your number three is stupid, you're an idiot. Tell me why. Tell me why I'm an idiot. I know I'm an idiot. I wanna know why you think I'm an idiot. But all of our lists are gonna be different. Here's mine, five underrated items, five overrated items. Let's start with the underrated, and we're gonna start with one that I feel is dramatically underrated by at least, at least by new content creators. And that number one underrated is shotgun microphones. I feel like I never see content creators use shotgun microphones, especially, especially on Twitch. And don't get me wrong, there are advantages and disadvantages to shotgun microphones versus dynamic microphones. For example, if you're in a noisy room, you do hear more of the noise around you. So just for reference, this is what the dynamic mic sounds like on stream. This is the Beacon USB dynamic mic, but if we wanna get real fancy here, I can switch over to the shotgun microphone and it's gonna sound a little bit more natural, but you're gonna hear a little bit more echo. By the way, if you don't know what a shotgun microphone is, I feel like I should have started with that. Here's one right here. This is a shotgun microphone. In fact, this is a new one. Uh, I've been wanting to see what the audio difference between these two microphones. You can actually see this on the top down camera right now. This is the one that we've used for years. This is the Rode NTG4 Plus. I think you can get the NTG4, which is the same microphone, but without the battery, and we don't even use the battery. I think you can get it for like $220. And this is about $1,000. This is the Sennheiser MKH416. Let's switch them out real quick. One sec. How does that sound? Test one, two, test one, two, three. Any different? Any better? Any worse? Do you hear any difference at all? But yeah, we've used this microphone for a long time. On my live stream, I actually just use a Rode NTG1. And you get a more natural, roomy sound. Sure, you get a little bit more echo. You don't have that dynamic mic right in front of your mouth, but it, it gets a little bit brighter and you hear more and it, it really sounds like the person is talking to you right in front of you. And I love that. And the thing is, 
it's like half the price of an SM7B. It's not like these are all $1,000. There are some very affordable and very good shotgun microphones. Which brings me to overrated number one, and some of you are probably expecting this, but the SM7B. Now, I've mentioned this microphone in the same way before many times. It is a good microphone. I'm saying it's overrated for the same reason I'm saying that shotgun microphones are underrated, which is too many people want them and they don't know why and it doesn't give them what they think it's going to give them. The SM7B is a good microphone. The microphone itself sounds better than the pod mic. It sounds better than the beacon mic, but we're not talking about studio recordings here. We're talking about Twitch and YouTube. I bet you take 99.9% .9 of Twitch streamers and you give them a blind test between a pod mic and SM7B and a beacon mic. I bet you two thirds of them are gonna get it wrong. And I say two thirds just probability wise. There are three microphones, you're one third the chance to get it right. And that's probably what's gonna happen. I'm not saying don't get the SM7B. I'm just saying don't get it first. When you're on a hefty budget, it's not gonna do for you what you think it's gonna do. What it's gonna do is it's gonna burn a hole in your pocket and make you save up for something that'll actually help you grow. That's all. All right, let's go back to underrated. Number two, at the risk of people leaving after this one, I'm gonna say this is probably one of the most important ones on the list. Number two is a Skillshare account. And this video is not sponsored by Skillshare in any way. I know we've done Skillshare sponsorships on this channel, this is not one of those videos. I've tried to make it very clear. Of all my content creator and streaming advice, the best thing that you can do, if you want to be a content creator, if you want to do this for a living, the best thing you can do is develop a skill and develop it better than most people. What sets you apart? What makes you amazing? Too many people on Twitch are doing the same exact thing as everybody else. They're expecting extraordinary results, but they're doing ordinary things. Invest in yourself, invest in your brain, invest in what makes you unique, and a Skillshare account is not expensive. And I know it's not a tangible thing you can hold, which is why overrated number two is also not a tangible thing you can hold, but it's something that too many people spend money on on the internet way too early, and that is a logo. Guys, unless you're starting a company, you don't need a logo. Your logo is you. I don't have a personal logo. I have a Senpai logo because it's my company. I have Senpai Records and Senpai Gaming and Senpai other stuff that I'm gonna be announcing soon, but I don't have a logo. And I know a lot of you say, well, you need a logo in order to sell merch with your logo on it. Can I tell you something? Of our three to four merch drops, large merch drops that we've done, if you take our hentai, sh sorry, wholesome, it says wholesome on it. If you take our wholesome shirt and you take the sales of that shirt and then you take every other shirt that we've sold with our logo on it, whether it's the Alpha Gaming logo or the Senpai logo or whatever, and you combine all of those, that one wholesome shirt outsold the rest of them combined. Underrated number three, we're at the hump, we're at the Wednesday of these lists, so I'm gonna give you a weird one. This thing is such a small thing, but it's really one of my favorites. Things. We use C stands. It's it's not the C stand, by the way. Before you think I'm talking about a stand, it's probably actually worse than the C stand. But we use a ton of C stands for all of our lights. Everything that needs to be mounted goes on these heavy duty C stands. And when you put your main light on a C stand and you have to lift it up and move it around, it's such a hassle. My favorite thing, and I refuse to use the light that doesn't have these, the wheels the wheels on the bottom. They're not expensive and they make the setup process 10 times easier. This is gonna sound so petty, but I, I swear by this. When you lift up a C-stand with a light, it wobbles around, so when you set it down, you don't see exactly where the light's gonna go until it's fully set down. You're like, ah, I moved it too far. And you gotta set up, you literally, uh, it's in the right place. I make so many of these videos, I make so much content. The less effort I can spend on the setup process, the more likely I am to even make a video. I do everything I can to just eliminate the setup. Wheels on my stands, one of the biggest ways I do that. And overrated number three, uh, this one's gonna polarize this audience a little bit. People are gonna, people are gonna disagree with me. Uh, and if you do, let me know. Uh, a third monitor at your streaming setup. I don't wanna be the guy who's like, not a single person can benefit from a third monitor, cause, cause I get it, everybody's needs are different, but here's the group of people that can like fully utilize and take advantage of the cost of a third monitor. Here are the people that have them. Can we just be honest with ourselves? We do it because we want our battle station to be amazing. I use two monitors. 
and I don't even fully fill out the second monitor. <laughs> Just, I don't. And I don't think you need it either. But if you are mad at me for saying that, please tell me why in the comments. And if you agree with me, hit the like button. If you disagree, hit the dislike button. I don't care. It doesn't tell me how many people hit it, but I bet it feels good to hit it. Underrated number four is going to be a weird one because it's already on almost every single streamer's desk. Underrated number four is the Stream Deck. Now, Harris, how can one of the most popular streaming items be underrated? Real question here to all the people with Stream Decks. How many of you have a massive Stream Deck? How many of you have the 32 key? and you only use it to change scenes and then nothing more. So many companies have understood the value of this device that they have added their own products into the API and you can control almost anything with that device now. I'm gonna take you back to what I said earlier. The less time I spend setting up, the more likely I am to make content. I just, I, I like getting rid of those barriers. Set and forget as much as I can make set and forget I'm a very happy person. So yes, I have my camera to change scenes and switch between the four cameras I have there. I have zoom-ins on there. I also have my stream deck to turn on and off all of my cameras so I don't accidentally leave them on. I don't have to lean up and hit the switch. I also have my stream deck to turn on and off all of my lights. I also have my stream deck to do flashback recording. So if there's a moment I wanna turn into other content, it's as simple as hitting a button. And that's not even everything I use it for and there are a million other things you can do. Just do yourself a favor and go and spend the next 30 minutes after this video, actually after this video you should watch another video of mine, but after that video you should go and you should spend like 15 to 20 minutes browsing videos about all the stuff you can do with your stream deck and make that thing more efficient because your content creation what's the word I'm looking for? Process, that wasn't even a hard word. Your content creation process could be easier and you could spend more time on the creative aspect than on the setup aspect. Overrated number four, and this one is my problem. I'm putting this on here because I, I have a genuine problem with this. Expensive cameras. Expensive cameras exist for a reason, but that reason applies to far fewer people than the amount of people who buy expensive cameras way too early. When you want to improve the quality of your content, cameras, make a difference, but they don't make the biggest difference. Before you upgrade your body to an expensive camera, take this into consideration. It is the fourth thing, in my opinion, in my opinion, fourth thing you should upgrade. The biggest thing that's gonna make your content more enjoyable to watch is audio. Audio first, second, who knows it? Second is lighting. Third is lenses. And then finally, then finally we have the camera body. But until you get to that fourth step, you could do amazing things with either a low-end camera or an old used camera. You wanna see my obsession lately? So this one here is my current vlogging camera. It is the A7S III. The body alone without a lens costs about $3,500. This is the original A7S. It came out about 10 years ago. I've bought two of these on Facebook now. I'm kind of addicted to buying used cameras on Facebook lately because we have so many cameras set up in here. I bought this for less than $500. I got both of them for less than $500. It is a full, full frame camera. It looks amazing. It doesn't look as good as this one, but with some simple color correction, it looks almost as good as this one, which makes these things amazing. And I go on Facebook Marketplace, geez, once or twice a week, just looking for used Sonys, because old Sonys are incredibly capable. Sony got ahead of the curve when it came to content creation cameras. They're crushing it, and they've been crushing it for a while. So yeah, don't be too quick to go out and get a fancy camera. Get yourself an okay camera, beginner camera, and then get yourself some good lighting, some decent audio, a nice lens upgrade maybe. You're rock solid. And for the last item on both sides here, number five, you had any guesses? Anything I've missed so far? Have you put a comment down below? I'm clearly trying to farm engagement here. Can you just humor me? put something in the comments. If you don't have something to add to the list, just throw, just throw an emoji down there. And by the way, I'm gonna put links to any of the underrated items in the description down below. Those are affiliate links. If you wanna help support the channel, we're doing a handful of very large projects right now. Clicking on any of those links, if you want any of these things, is gonna help fund those projects. So thank you for that. If not, don't worry about it. You don't have to spend money to be a good content creator. Don't worry about it. Underrated number five. This is an audio one, and this is something that was lacking on the GoXLR 
and it bothered me so much. It is the sole reason I don't use the Go XLR. Number five is submixes. And submixes are a make or break for me when I'm streaming. Let me explain what submixes are if you don't know. Submixes just mean if there is music, I can change the volume that I hear compared to the volume that you hear. So if it's really loud in my headphones, but it sounds great for you, I can turn it down just for me. There's a mix for me, and there's a mix for you. Those are called submixes. When I was gaming on stream and using the Go XLR, my audience would say, your teammates are too quiet. We can't hear Sam. We can't hear Scott. And yet in my headphones, they were the right volume. And if I turned them up enough for my audience to hear them properly, I couldn't hear the game very well. I couldn't hear footsteps, couldn't hear gunshots when they were far away. It ruined the game for me. That whole problem is solved with submixes, where I set the volume to where the audience likes it, and then I unlock the two mixes and I just turn mine down to where I like it. It's also allowed me to use a shotgun mic on stream because this microphone picks up the whole room and I don't stream with headphones on. I stream with my speakers so it can be more natural. But if I had the music at a proper volume that you guys enjoyed, it would also come through the microphone and you'd hear it twice. There'd be a huge echo. So when I'm streaming, I have the music turned way down low on my speakers so I can hear what you're listening to but it doesn't pick up in the microphone. And overrated number five is another one that's gonna bother people, but I've been saying it for years. Overlays. No, 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 I'm not saying all overlays are overrated. All I'm saying is the trend is clearly going in a direction. And in an attempt to make ourselves stand out, we have a hesitancy to make some really cringy overlays and to go overboard. But overlays aren't the content. You are the content. I highly recommend you find one or maybe two really cool and unique elements that can go on your stream that make it feel like you put effort into it and then leave it there. Something like VBI. VBI, who you know sponsors a ton of our videos, they make some really, really cool widgets. We've even made some really cool widgets that we've released to you guys for free. Find one that you find is really cool and put it on your stream or grab a couple and give yourself some variety. Maybe one day you have this on there, another day you have this on there. All I'm saying is streams that are a little more overlay than they are content, a little overrated, that's all. What do you think? How much did this bother you? How much did you agree with what I said? Leave a comment down below like I've said a hundred times this video. I mean, who knows, maybe you guys will have incredible insight and there are things that I missed and we can make a sequel to this because I'll be like, oh my gosh, you guys are so much smarter than me. These are great comments. It's it's actually not very unlikely. Again, links to all these things in the description down below. Hit the like button if you haven't yet. If you're watching this far, I know you liked the video, so hit the like button. And as always, happy streaming.